All right guys, welcome to Nick Tasha Gaming. This is normally a channel where I upload my highlights from my Twitch gaming sessions, I'm currently playing Apex Legends. I'm pinged in the room. It's not. One more, one more. Let's go, let's go. Oh, no way did he get me there. But we're doing something a bit different today, building a PC. If you want to come and join in live and ask me any questions about this build or you know Apex Legends or gaming or streaming in general, come to the Twitch channel and ask me anything or just sit back and enjoy the games. But today we are building an upgrade to my current PC. So if I just run through the, the parts that I've got here, I've gone for the Metallic Gear Neo Cube in white. And the reason why I went for this instead of the Lian Li is because it has the white strip on the side here. Whereas the Lian Li has silver here. The Corsair RM850X. This is one of the only PSUs, power supplies that you can buy that is white and has uh, is fully modular with white braided cables. Motherboard here, a Gigabyte Aorus. AX370, which is white as well. CPU, a Ryzen 1700 Pro. And storage, I'm going for one terabyte, a lot faster speeds than your normal SSDs that you'll find. Graphics card, this one is a bit of an older model. Um, we're going for a GTX 1070 Dual. We have RAM, we have Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro. I have four sticks of 8 gig DDR4 at 3200 megahertz. Corsair QL120 uh, RGB fans. The last thing here we have is Deep Cool Castle uh, 360 EX AIO in white. And that's it, we're good to go. Let's get to the build. So the first thing you really should be doing is taking apart the case so that you can put the motherboard standoffs in the right place if they're not already or just double check that they are already there they might already be there with this one uh, but we're going to open it up and double check anyway and just try it for size to make sure we've got everything in place there's going to be a few other other things inside the case as well that you're going to need to take out i think we undo the the roof of it first the glass just slides out yes look at that now the rear just slides up as well. What I like to do is just put the motherboard in straight away. Uh, there's no reason why you shouldn't, apart from it can be a pain if you put everything in and then it doesn't work and then you have to take it all back out again. So this is what a motherboard stand looks like. It's a small screw that's like a hexagonal shape but with a thread on the bottom. The thread goes into the case and then it's left you with a nut to screw the motherboard into. When you're working on these parts and touching these parts inside the computer, you can always ground yourself by touching the actual case of the PC, then it will remove the static and prevent it from going into the other parts and ruining the parts. So this is going to be going in that way and lining up with that shroud surround there. We need to make sure we've got the screws. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and they're all square and in a row. Some motherboards have them slightly off. So these are already in place for us. So we don't need to use any of the extra screws. Pop in the, uh, the back panel IO shield. And we need to pop that into place in the right, in the right orientation. But when you hear that click, you know it's in. The gold round audio ports stick out, so you can line them up through the I.O. shield that you've just put in place, so that you know you're sitting the motherboard in the right spot. Now we just place the motherboard gently and carefully. Once you've done that, you can just slightly jiggle it about until you can see the motherboard standoffs are lined up on each of the holes. Now we can secure the motherboard in and we use these screws to go into the motherboard standoffs. Now I'm going to do this one here for you so you can see what I always do as well to make sure they're in properly is turn them anti-clockwise first until you hear the click like that 
and then you know it's the screw is sat in place properly and it prevents you from cross threading the, the threads. Now we can go back the correct way to tighten it up. Just do them gently to begin with. Once they're all in place, then you can tighten them up. Okay, so the next thing that I like to do is to install the CPU. Now what we need to do is open up the CPU socket by moving that out of the way. Okay, so now what we have to do is line up the gold triangle on the chip to the triangle on the CPU socket. And it just drops and sits in place like that. And then we can clamp that back down. Okay, now we can install the RAM. I have four sticks of RAM and four RAM slots. So it's very basic, you just put them all in. So we just push these tabs back for one side and for the other side. And then make sure that your RAM goes in the right way. There's a slot on the bottom of the RAM. So you, you make sure it lines up with the notch that's in the RAM slots here. It will normally say which one is one, two, three, four. So in this case, if I only had two, I would install the RAM slots in this one furthest away from the CPU. And then I would skip one and go to this third slot here. But they just slot in like so. And then you just push down on both sides until both of the clasps click in place. And click both in. Pop that in. Next, we are going to move on to the SSD. In this case, it's an M.2 NVMe SSD, the A data. Um, and you might not have this, you might have a traditional SSD or traditional hard drive, which is going to be a lot different to this. So there's a standoff here and it has a screw in the top of it. We need to remove this and that standoff is in the right place. You can see there's one, two, three, four slots where the standoff could be depending on the, on the length of your SSD. And this one is in the right place. So we take the tiny screw off like that just pushes in, it just sits on top. So we're just going to screw this in. Next thing is the power supply. Fully modular, uh, if you haven't bought a fully modular or semi-modular power supply, then you won't see these uh, ports for all the different separate cables individually. You'll just have them all coming out of one in one clump. Okay, so we need to mount this in the right place. This is where the PSU is going to go. So we need to move all these cables out the way. And the fan needs to be facing the outside of the case for cooling. And the main power switch needs to be at the back. So it goes in this way. Like so, it just butts up to the back there. All four are in now. Tighten them up so they're tight and then I'll go over them once again. Now we should really do the cables. So we need to work out which of these rubber grommets we want to put the cable through and it needs to be ideally the closest and cleanest looking route. Okay, so this is the middle grommet here and the USB 3 port is just here. There's actually two on this, make sure it's in properly. There you go, that's in. HD audio, because we haven't got any USB uh, one or two ports, so it is literally HD audio. Normally you'd have a USB port, which ends up plugging into around the bottom area of the motherboard. Okay, so the HD audio is in the bottom left here. It does say audio in the background of the pins there. And this is a one way only job as well because it has one pin missing, uh, which is a blank that's blanked off here. So you know you can't get it in the wrong way. And this simply goes straight down into here. And then we can just hide this back here. Now front panel connections are usually the hardest. They're all these multiple small teeny tiny wires. I've got power switch, hard drive LED, power LED, reset switch. Normally you have a front panel connection around here. This is my one here. Um, normally I would look up on Google for a picture. Front panel connector, this image here, labels all the connections so you know which one goes where. There is a blank one that isn't used, so you know which orientation up everything is. However, for this uh, motherboard, it actually comes with a nice sort of cable tidy, which makes your life a bit easier. And it gives you 
um, a base to work in outside of the motherboard. It's where you can plug everything in. There, like that. Okay. Like so. And then the rest of the cables can be fed back to the rear. Okay, let's get the big uh, motherboard connector out of the way first, the 24 pin. This one can go through the middle section here. Uh, this goes in this slot here next to the RAM. So the clip needs to be facing outwards where you can see there's a, a bit of a lip for the clip to actually clip onto. And then that just goes in. So now we need to route the graphics card PCIe cables through to roughly where the graphics card is going to be sitting, which on this one is actually quite low. We're also going to need to plug in the 8-pin CPU connector, and that is going to need to go in the top grommet up here. This is the bit of the odd one out here, where it goes in here. Okay, and then the 8-pin CPU connector goes only one way into this top part here, like so. From the back again, this uh, front panel SATA connector obviously needs power, but just gonna plug this in to one of these. And now I'm gonna pile all these cables and put the back cable cover back on. I'm going to leave one of the SATA cables exposed because we are probably gonna need it for the fans. Now we need to unbox the cooler. Okay, we've got three fans, brackets for mounting. And of course, we've got the cooler itself. That has already got thermal paste on this. We're going to need to remove the AMD OEM cooler bracket, which if you're using an OEM cooler, obviously you won't be doing. These are just two black plastic brackets held in by two screws each. Okay, so now we've removed the black AMD brackets at the top and bottom for the OEM AMD AM4 cooler. This AIO actually uses the original OEM back bracket so we don't have to do anything at the rear apart from hold it in place while we mount the new screws in to take the new cooler. Okay now we have to mount some brackets onto the cooler being careful not to touch the thermal paste that's pre-applied obviously. Okay and now it's a case of installing the, the, the pump onto the CPU. Yep, they feel good. Okay, next step is to attach the fans to the radiator. And they're going to need the long screws. Let's them in. Okay, all fans in. Now we have to connect all the fans, the three fans here, to the splitter. And then we have to connect this one to the CPU fan header. And we connect the pump cable to the CPU OPT header which is underneath it. Now we connect this RGB cable here that's hanging off to the SATA cable and then this SATA cable can be routed to a SATA somewhere at the back. Okay and now we have to position the radiator where we want it in the case. I'm going to go for the top mount and screw it into place. Now the last thing to do is to put the graphics card in. I'm going to have to remove two slots here, two anti plates. Let's put them out of the way. Look for that slots open. This plugs in. Okay, now all that's left is to install the QL120 fans. Okay, now we can add the controller to connect all the fans together, powered by SATA and USB. Okay, the fans are now in, all three QL120s. They're now plugged into the Corsair Lightning Node Pro, which controls the lighting, but the lighting only. So we need to power them so the fans actually spin. That part is not included in the kit. So I've got a one to three fan splitter so that all the fans work. We plug each fan into one of these ends and then this singular end 
goes into the motherboard into a fan header. Okay, now we're finished, everything is connected. So now it's the moment of truth to switch it on and make sure everything powers up and works as it should do. And there we go. All the fans are now lighting up and all the RGB is lighting up in its default state. So it's usually just gonna be a rainbow effect for everything. And the next step is to connect the monitor and download the IQ software and have a play around and configure it to do the colors that you're looking to get.